Hey guys, this is Robert Daly with The Recreational Woodworker and today I'm gonna show you how to install these cabinets. These are my lower cabinets that I've been building and this is part of our series, How to Build and Install Kitchen Cabinets. We've got most of our lowers built and now is a good time to install them. There's a few tools you'll need. You'll definitely want a level. You'll want a bucket with plenty of shims good screws, possibly a stud finder if you need it. I have all my studs marked already, so I don't need a stud finder, and I know where all my lines are. And then a super great tool to have is a laser level. I'm borrowing this one from my father-in-law, and basically they're all about the same. What I've discovered through this kitchen is that I am about an inch off from that corner to that corner. My house sags. It was built in the 60s, it's now 19, er, 2020, so that's about an 80 year old house. Things settle, things move. Um, consulting with some cabinet maker friends of mine, he said, you want your cabinets to be level. So even though my floor is out of level, I want my cabinets to be installed level or I'll have problems with countertops, etc. So that means I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of shimming. shimming. I'm gonna have to do a lot of work here and thankfully I'm doing this before I put in my floors so I can use my floors to offset some of that gap. So I'm actually going to start by mounting this one at my 34 and a half inch mark because um, that is my height and then this will start at 36 inches. Over here my cabinets will probably finish about 37 inches and that is kind of frustrating. On this back wall will just come right there. So it is what it is. I'm not super thrilled about that part, but that's part of working in an older house like this. When we're done, it'll look good. Alrighty, so now let's get started. I've already got my laser level leveled, center calibrated. I even checked it by making some marks on the wall putting my four foot level on there that I know is accurate, making sure my lines line up. Now, I will need to turn off some of my lights to make this laser easier to see. As you can see right here, you just get it level and it's pretty fine tune adjustments. And so the more accurate you can be, the less error you're gonna have because the further this laser shoots, obviously any error is going to be multiplied over the distance. So we have that about right. This one works by turning it on and then you'll notice it starts spinning. And then I don't know if you can see it on the wall, but then you'll see our laser flash ever so often. And basically that laser hits right here in this corner. All right, I have all my lights off, so I'm sure it's gonna be super grainy. But you can see right here at this corner where my cabinets are going to start, that is my line. And now I just need to get everything lined up with that right here. And you can actually see this is where my floor dips the most. I can even feel it. it comes around here and that's going to have to come up an inch. Which means my really cool toe kick idea I had is not going to work. So I will have to modify that. That's a little unfortunate. So, but this is part of part of cabinets. I should, if I would have checked this before, I would have known. Remodeling an 80 year old home, no fun. Nothing here is level. Nothing in this entire county is level. I knew that going into it, but I wasn't expecting an inch out of level. Um, that's an issue, but I've consulted with a few friends who are in the trades and we came up with a solution. I'm gonna share that with you now. Okay. So, basically I, quadruple checked my laser level, made sure it was true, got my level out, made sure that was true, and then I came in with some jointed plywood that I knew was perfectly straight, and I installed it all the way around, and checked it for level, and then I checked it for um, level with the laser, and everything is in accord that we are level. However, my ceiling's not level, my floor's not level, my house isn't level, my walls aren't level. We're gonna work with that. That's where trim comes into play. So here's what's gonna happen. This house is here, it's not moving anymore, right? 
So what I'm going to do is I am going to install my cabinets, level and plumb, and raise up this little dip right here. That means I'm gonna lose about an inch right there in that little dip, but then the dip kind of slowly goes away and then it kind of slowly goes away right here. So basically the concrete does that. After I do that, I'm gonna come in with concrete leveler and I'm going to pour it on the floor and I'll just mask off on the cabinets where I need. I'm gonna jack them up and then I've got um, that. It's gonna be a little bit of pain doing it that way, but it's what needs to happen. So with the concrete leveler, it'll take out the dip so you're not gonna feel it as much. I might have to modify my nice little trim right there, maybe knock off the face frame, put a new face frame on. If I have to do that, oh well. But as far as everything else goes, we are ready to start bolting things down. And we are actually going to start with the sink base because the sink base dictates everything else. So we're gonna do sink base, corner cabinet, and then this cabinet, and then that cabinet will be last. And it's just gonna be the spacer. For your installation purposes, you need shims, lots of shims. I have shims, little plywood off cuts right here and a lot of shims. Now you can buy your shims for like $2 for like a little pack of 10. So you'll, you, let's see, that would be about $2 worth of shims. Or you can use the affiliate link in the description below to buy the Fast Shim from Fast Cap for about $10. Make as many shims as you need out of your scrap 2x4 for the rest of your life and save a small fortune and have tons of shims and never run out of shims again because you always have a two by four. Just like in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you always carry a towel. Well, a carpenter should always carry a spare two by four. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Doesn't matter what kind of furniture you make. Always have some two by fours laying around. There you go, tip of the day. All right, so we're gonna level this guy up. You can see that's where my dip majorly starts. You can see the crack in the concrete right there. And that is why. So that is an issue we have to overcome. So that is about an eighth of an inch low right there. And I know my board is level. This is basically a ledger board, except I'm using it in the opposite way. And then I'm going to make sure I'm level in all of my directions. Okay, we have our first two cabinets installed. Let me just walk you through what I did. Is I'm making sure they are level. It's easy to do with that. Make sure the back is level. Then I level up the front this way. Make sure I'm level that way. Triple check it. Then I have my spacer from a dishwasher. I have seen too many times. Guys, mismeasure this and then the dishwasher won't fit, or the oven won't fit, or the microwave won't fit. Um, I saw one hat cabinet maker, um, actually he's probably a pretty decent cap cabinet maker, but he was just this old drunk, and he had to like cut out drywall to get the cabinets to move over enough to fit the oven in. It was, was bad. But anyway, so what I did is your dishwasher is 24 inches and then has a little flange around it. So I made my opening 25 inches, that little flange will fit, and that way I'll have zero issues getting my dishwasher in and out. So that means from here to here is supposed to be 26 and a half inches. So that's what I cut my spacer. I really should have three spacers, 26 and a half, and then that is, whoopsie, 26 and 716. So I'm like a little 16th of an inch off right there, but that's, 
that's no big deal. I'm not even worried about that. But I, so I have plenty of room for that and I'll have to cut a hole in the side of that cabinet to run that in and that'll be good. This is level and install. You can see I've got it in three studs. Um, you always wanna to try to mount your cabinets to a stud. There is one cabinet over here that I'm not going to be able to mount to a stud and I'm probably going to cut out drywall and put in a splice just to be able to anchor it. Now I'm ready to install my corner cabinet. I'm going to get it placed, leveled and all that and then we'll take this guy and this face frame right here that I overbuilt will get trimmed to the appropriate size. All right, guys, I'm getting a little bit tired, but it's um, close to the end of the day. I've got this guy installed and leveled, overcame my unevenness in the floor. Oh gosh, I'm not happy about that, but it's what it is. Um, this part of Texas, I tell you, there's nothing level. No house I've ever been into has been level. One, really, really nicely built house but I've been in houses that are six months old and already re having to go readjust doors because they're already this far out. So an 80 year old house, it is what it is. You just do what you can. All right, so I need to fit this cabinet. I need to fit this cabinet in that hole. Now, I originally overbuilt my face frame, but just the way everything lined out, I'm going to have to trim the face frame down quite a bit. My opening, is 23, oh, come on. Opening is 23 and 11 sixteenths is what it looks like. I'll double check that with both hands in a minute. But nope, 23 and 5 eighths. So that means I need to trim quite a bit over here. In a perfect world, this would be 24 inches, but I made my face frame 25 and a half inches. So I have plenty to cut off here. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this side right here down to an inch and a half. That way I'm looking at the same thing and then determine how much I'm going to take off of each side to get an even uh, reveal. Okay, so now my face frames are even on both sides and we are ready to kind of start test fitting. All right, now I'm just gonna push this into place. I know my height is wrong because my floors are insanely out of level. And there we go. Let's see, I should be exactly 24 inches now. Yeah, I'm exactly 24 inches. My opening is 24 and 5 eighths. No, 23 and 5 eighths. So I'm going to, I need to take 3 eighths of an inch off. So that's 3 sixteenths on both sides. That's easy enough to do. So I put a chamfer on my edges. I think it makes a better looking seam whenever you're joining cabinets together. So I'm gonna go and just break that edge a little bit. good and then I'll fine tune it with my hand plane as well. There we go. And this is like one of my favorite things in the world using a hand plane. There we go. I am ever so slightly hitting on the bottom right there. I seem to be good right here. So I need to take just a little bit off the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand plane, I'm gonna start right here. And then work my way back. that. Just come back a little bit. And that should give me just a very, very slight slope. Now we're going to test fit it again. There we go. That is 
forgive the language, but damn near perfect. So now I just need to shim this guy up, shim it together, level it, do all those good things, and then we'll pull it together. I've got a little scratch right there I'll need to sand and putty out, but I like that.